I think so often it comes back to the the original inspiration, the Genesis, you know? And uh, I heard this uh, awesome quote uh, recently that um, sometimes you you can ruin things by, it's uh, called paralysis by analysis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, I, I love good. that. Yeah. Cause it really is so often in the studio or in writing, it comes back to that original whisper that you heard from the gods or from, you know, from the sky. That's, that's the real, that's the Genesis, you know, and you, sometimes you have to trust that. Paralysis by analysis. That's good. I love yeah. That. I think a lot, I think also I, two things came to mind. One was that we, we often, we idolize, you know, say the Beatles as a great example or Bob Dylan, but just take the Beatles. They would make albums that sounded like different bands on the album. They were so musically diverse and made it the sort of made it their business to be. It's almost like Gary Oldman and how many characters he can play. And he's just a phenomenal actor, but that's one type of acting. And um, I remember thinking like, well, if you're not going to like this because we sound like us, that doesn't really make sense to me. You know, it's like people like the Ramones because they sounded like the Ramones. They're not going to go, let's scrap all this. It doesn't mean that either one's right, but I think we glorify that to a level that, to the Beatles' credit and to Dylan's credit, they were so incredible that they set the bar so high that everyone now thinks that they have to show that they have so much more range than what you thought I just did. When I think it's just hard enough to write a song and to make it compelling to you. So part of what we did when you hear, when you just heard that was we're listening to maybe just hit play on it again. The, the synth in the beginning is an effort. I, I think it's an effort to dress the song up differently. Yeah. But we realized it was way more compelling on this tough sounding guitar than it was on this synth. And it felt like we were trying to prove something to somebody instead of just writing a good song. So I think taking the ego out of it and, um, you know, anyone who has something to say about it, it's like, well, you go try to write a song. This is like, this is what we're trying to do. This is sacred to us. So um, it's a little like tangent, but I think that's present in a, a lot of my musical friends that I feel like are just distracted, are worried about the perception of their music and the ego involved in that. I think that's, you're, you're misguided. Like, Dylan's a genius. The Beatles were geniuses. We're just mere mortals that are, <laughs> we're just writing as good of music as we can write. And right now it happens to be on the instruments that are in our hands, but it yeah. could change in a couple of years. It's not like dogmatic, but I think we need to listen to that, you know? One of the things I love about the, the album version of Gloria, that's from a technical detail, which I think is, I always remember, is that um, it's, it's on an electric guitar, a semi-hollow body guitar when it starts. And Wes would not allow the engineer to plug it into a, an amp. He said, it, we just, it has to f sound like it does right now without plugged into the amp. And so it's a microphone on an electric guitar without an amplifier. And Wes, I think, would have probably, you know, wrestled the engineer to the ground <laughs> if, he try, if he tried to plug it into the amp because, you know, he, we needed that raw energy and that sound. And whenever I hear that song come on the radio or whenever I play it in my car, I always remember that moment. Yeah. Like, no, no amp. And it would give it this low end, this muddy low end when you would plug it in that we didn't want. And you would, we had it mic'd up right by the F hole and then a long ways away had a room mic or two that was getting that slap back effect. I think that's something else that someone told me. He said, make sure it sounds good going into the mic. Don't worry about what to do after that. And I thought, man, that's, remember that. Because I remember going to, what would have been Guitar Center or something. This guy's like, you need this preamp. You need it. And they're just selling kids junk, you know? And I'm sure if you're good enough, that helps. But we weren't good enough. He was just making money off of us, commissions, you know? And what we really needed to hear was make sure it sounds really, really good going in or it's not going to matter what effect you can throw on it or what slap back. You just get slap back. So I think there's a, something called Tougher Guitar. Um, if you wouldn't mind... It's in the, the voice memo notes. Um, this was something where we did this just out of the barrenness of making demos, but we really ended up, we liked that sound. It reminded me of when I heard 
Bonnie Vare plays Skinny Love on Jules Holland, where there's this growl. What is that? Yeah. You know, he's. I just like the sound of that guitar. It's, it's like it's a raspy. dangerous beauty. Yeah. It's like when danger and beauty collide. It's yeah. that vibe. I always, I love that and sound. And this is a good for the listeners. This is a good representation of me and Wes are really starting to love the song and have confidence. And this is something that, for example, that a guy like Simon would hear. You know, months before we go into the studio. This is a great example of what Simon, the producer, would hear and get a really, really good idea of tempo, lyrics, structure, kind of the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah, so it's really coming into it, its own on this demo. You're, I mean, you're almost hitting the, the guitar sound you want, the way it's mic'd up, so that you can have a certain sound quality to it. And then we but go into the that. the piano is yeah. coming in now. And now this sounds really true also to what happens on the album. So it's almost like sometimes the demos just give you something that you're just going to recreate at a more detailed level. It's a good roadmap instead of just, this is a really rough demo. This felt like a lot closer to the, minus the drums. I think the drums we have. Yeah, the drums was a really big surprise for me personally going into the recording of Gloria. Um, the song initially relied heavily on like stomps and percussion and um, guitar and just big vocals. And then uh, the drum set is not something I, I wouldn't consider the Lumineers is known for like sick drums. <laughs> um, I would consider interesting percussion drum thing ideas, but you know, it's not like ACDC or, or something that has really elaborate, complex drum beats per se. Uh, whereas Gloria actually has a drum set involved, and that was a really exciting thing that kind of came out um, once we we're in like the quote unquote real studio out in the Catskills with Simon. Yeah, I yeah. think that's also like a testament though to, to Jer, and I think we all feed off of that serving the song for the longest time because other ways just led us astray. So it's like, you know, a guitar player that needs a solo to feel good about himself. And in this band, there aren't, as example, many guitar solos. There's not a ton of, there's a lot of written parts on the drums that I think a lot of people would be surprised if they just only heard some songs about how much drumming Jer can do on a technical sense. It's just not it's not needed to showcase because we don't need to feed each other's ego in that way. We're just trying to make a really good song. And I, I like that about the the MO of this group is it's trying to serve trying to serve these songs. It's not trying to show you how good we are. Uh, so you think we're like technically really advanced, which, you know, I think also leads to like people, <laughs> there'll be bands that come on tour with us and they'll, they'll have this idea of us and then they'll go, oh, damn, these guys can really, these guys are all right, you know? But it's it, this music is childlike. It's simple. We always would joke that these are easy songs to play. Yeah, they're just really fucking hard to write sometimes. 